thought for the day. The person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. Welcome to 7 Minutes for Yourself. I'm Christina Ina, and I'm so glad you've joined me for what I believe will be 7 of the most enriching minutes of your day. Let's take this time to reconnect with ourselves and improve our well-being. In today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself, we talk about developing a growth mindset in order to embrace the journey on the way to success. Have a listen. People with the growth mindset believe that intelligence or skill in any field can be developed through effort. Basically, they believe that anyone can nurture their abilities in anything. The inverse of the growth mindset is the fixed mindset. People with this one believe that intelligence and skill are innate. It's something that we're born with. We're either born gifted or not. There's no room for change. Basically, they believe intelligence is fixed from birth. In this essay, we'll explore why the growth mindset is the better one and how we can develop it. Because they prioritize learning over failure, they are unafraid to take risks. They prioritize growing over stagnation. On the other hand, people with the fixed mindset don't want to challenge themselves because they believe talent and intelligence are fixed. They look at failure as an assault on who they are as a person. To them, lack of knowledge is an indicator of stupidity and failure once means failure always. A person with the growth mindset believes that they are always in a state of flux and transformation. So they don't attach their identity to their results. Instead, they focus on the process of growing and learning. The first key to developing a growth mindset is actually very simple. Understanding that it exists and that it's possible for the brain to change. Neuroscience has shown that our brains are not fixed and, in fact, they are very malleable. We can always grow and learn new skills. For example, a study found that taxi cab drivers develop more gray matter in their brains to help them navigate more effectively in large cities. They also found that the amount of gray matter in their brains was correlated with the number of years that they had been working as a taxi driver. This suggests that the act of driving a taxi led to changes in their brains which allowed them to be more effective at their job. The second key is to focus on process over results. Dweck has said that we should praise others for their efforts and their process rather than praising them for their results. For example, it's better to say, you studied very effectively for that test and your hard work really paid off, rather than, you're so smart, you got an A. In the former example, we're focusing in on and praising the student's process, which is something that they can control. Hopefully, they'll learn to associate themselves and their results with that process. However, in the latter example, we praise the student for a result, which is ultimately out of their control. Unfortunately, this student will likely begin to associate themselves with the result. I think it's really important to emphasize that it's not easy to pass a growth mindset on to others. It's not as simple as telling someone that they're a hard worker and that they just need to put in the effort. They need to internalize that they can change their results by changing their process. So they need to know how to effectively create a process, alter it, and produce results from that process. My solution to this is to keep a journal. Pick an activity that you want to get really good at. For example, let's say that I want to get really good at math. In the journal, I would write down my process for studying mathematics. I'd list out the steps and put a quantifiable measurement to as many things as I can. For example, my process might look like this. Review my notes once a day, do 10 practice problems a day, and meet with my professor for 30 minutes a week. So my process has been solidified and everything has been quantified. Now I need to designate a result that I'm looking for. I need a target to aim at. Let's say that I'm looking for a grade of 80% or higher on my next exam. When I get my exam mark back, I compare it to my goal. If it's higher, then I know my system works, but I can still go back and alter parts of it to see if I can do even better. Or I can try and optimize it. Maybe I can spend less time reading the textbook and more time doing practice problems. If my grade comes back lower, I definitely need to go back and refine my process. I believe this method of keeping a journal, creating a process, and refining it until the desired outcome is achieved will help promote a growth mindset. It keeps our mind focused on a changeable process. The results are measured and paid attention to only as an indicator of how well our process works. The process either works as intended or it doesn't, but it says nothing of the person. The process is always malleable. It's not that it doesn't work. It just doesn't work yet. That concludes today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Today and every day with your kiddo is a gift. Enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in.